Welcome back to the channel. My name is Verbal, and this is another Valheim build. Today, we're going to be tackling a fermentation station, an area where you can contain all of the things that you need to ferment your meads and potions in one modular area or a much larger one. I have two builds for you today. The first one will be a three barrel modular small setup. This could be built inside or outside of a building and it can be built uh, in a variety of different sizes. All you would have to do is just repeat the build over and over again. The second build is a little bit larger. It is an eight barrel station. It's circular in design and you would be able to make at least one of each of the potions in each of the barrels going all the way around. So let's jump right into it. First off, we're going to build our small three barrel modular system. This can be repeated over and over and over again to build a wide variety of shapes. But let's look at the materials that we're going to need first. This is a completely simple build. You do not need any special materials at all, aside from bronze in order to actually make your fermentation barrels. But everything else here can be made completely by wood. So we're gonna start off first with grabbing some wood. And with any build, you're gonna wanna clear out an area big enough for what you want to build. I've cleared out this little area here ahead of time. And we're gonna start off first with a half wall. We're gonna find where we wanna place the very edge of this. So I'm gonna start this here and we're gonna place another one 90 degrees to that. We are then gonna take this small wood wall one by one we're gonna place one there go back to the half wall put one there another small one by one wood wall and one more half wall and then one at 90 degrees to that that's gonna give us the basic shape of our build and then we're just gonna repeat this on the front so half wall and then one by one half wall one by one half wall now that we have the basic shape for our fermentation station we're gonna put up supporting beams so we're gonna select the wood pole two meter vertical we're gonna put those on the corner here. And at each of the wall section, we're gonna add a beam there as well, as well as coming along the backside, beating that just as we had on the front, like so. Now that we have added in our supporting beams, we're gonna add our floor in, and I'm gonna suggest starting off with the two by two wood floor, put one there, one there, one there, and then switching over to the one by one floor, we're gonna put two of those in here, giving us the floor that we need. Next, we're gonna change back to our wood pole two meter and on the front of our build, whichever side is the front, cause at this point it could be either or, whichever's gonna be our front, we're gonna put our two meter vertical pole here and then switch over to the one meter pole. And we're gonna put those here on the back. Like that. Then let's bring up the wood wall. We're gonna rotate that to where the smooth face is on the outside of the build. We're gonna put one there. We're gonna put one here. And then we're gonna select the 26 degree wood wall. We're gonna rotate this around to the front here. We're gonna put one here and we're gonna put one there. Now this will be a little bit of a building trick if you ever want to have your roofing in between a beam. We're gonna start off by adding a 26 degree wood cross. We're gonna put that cross right here, just like that. And then we are gonna add onto the front of this a one meter horizontal beam. We're gonna extend it out this way. And then we're going to take the 26 degree thatch ridge roof. You wanna kind of bring this to where it'll finally snap. It will actually snap to that front pole. We want it to snap right there like that to where it puts half of it off of the pole and half of it on the other side of the pole. And then we just need to remove this right here. And then we can take the 26 degree thatch roof all the way across all the way down. And before you put it on this end here, make sure that you're adding in that 26 degree wood cross on the end and then add that piece right in there like that. We're also gonna add in a 26 degree wood beam going from each of the long pole in the front to the short pole in the back. So just like this, one there, one there, one there. And then on each of those, we're gonna add in a 26 degree wood cross. And you're gonna have to come in on the inside for this. And you could do this before or after the thatch roofing. You just need to make sure that you're getting that angle set correctly on the thatch roof. There's another one there. Whichever works easiest for you to do. One there and one here. So where it looks like that. Now to finish off the roofing, we are going to add a 26 degree roof piece on the back. And we're just gonna match this up directly to roof ridge piece there. Bring that all the way across. It should have all the spacing already needed. And that will be our roof. 
Now, next hop up inside here, we're going to put in some shelving for the chests that we're going to add. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the shelving. You can rotate this any which way that you want to. I like having all of my lines running forward. We're just going to add a piece here and a piece here. What that's going to do is that's going to give us the place to put the chests down. So right now we're going to take a chest and we're going to rotate it to where we can see the ring here on the outside. And we're going to line this up. Bring this as far forward as you want it to be. You can have it forward all the way. I like to have mine back just a little bit recessed. And we're going to put a chest here. And then you're going to need to get some elevation, most likely. So I would suggest building yourself a little bit of a ladder because we need to look down onto that shelf that we just put in place. And see how now this allows me to put this right here on top. So I'm going to move this to around about the same spacing there. And I'm going to put one there. And then here, I'm going to do the same. Put one here, a little bit of height, and then find that spot that you want to place that in again. And you're going to put that in there just like that. Now, to finish off this front part with the chests, I'm going to suggest grabbing a one by one wood wall. We're going to rotate that with the smooth side out. We're going to let it snap all the way up here to the top, like so. And that just kind of fills in that empty spot up in the top. Now we're going to need to finish up this back wall. So I suggest since we already have the wood wall out, the wood wall one by one, we're going to bring that around here. We're going to rotate it to the smooth side out. And we're going to put one there, one there, one here, and one here. And then we're going to change over to the straight wood wall. We're going to fill in these back pieces here to completely enclose and close off our build. So now we're going to make a shelf to catch all of our potions when they are done brewing. So I would suggest grabbing a one meter horizontal beam and we're going to do a little free snapping here since we don't want it to snap all the way up to the top. We don't want it to snap all the way out at the bottom. We want it somewhere in between. So to free snap, what you're going to do is you're going to hold shift and see how shift now doesn't allow me to snap to anything. So we're going to find that top spot. We're going to hold shift. We're going to move down to where it is that we want our shelves to be. I like this spot right here. So I'm going to put in a block right there. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a a one by one wood floor here and here and then add the one meter on the other side and that gives me a little shelf now to get this to go all the way across is really super super simple you could do this one of two ways you can either use a one meter board and rotate it parallel and then run it all the way across what i like to do is i just like to run all of my flooring at one time all the way across and then remove the sections that i don't need like so and then i can add in the little support beams. Not that they're really needed, but aesthetically speaking, they look nicer. And there we go. We have our little little, little shelves for our potions to land on when they are done brewing. Okay, and the last thing now to do is to add in our barrels. So let's grab our materials for our barrels. We're going to come down here. We're going to go to crafting. You're going to select the fermentator. Rotate this around to where the spout is sticking out. And you're going to aim it at the flooring and move this out to where it's almost on the edge of that first half wall. And we're going to drop one there, there, and there. And then there we go. That is the first modular piece for the fermentation station. Gives you three fermenters. It gives you four chests of storage. Now you can substitute the standard chest for like an iron chest or something like that. If you want more storage, it will accommodate those in there as well. Now, because these are completely covered, you should have no problems whatsoever adding uh, items to your fermenter. So I have three meads that I'm going to add in here and I'm going to let these things cook and come back to these later. Now that some time has elapsed, we're going to come back here and check on our fermenta fermentators. And these are done. So we've got stamina potion, poison potion, and frost potion. Now, as I told you before, that three barrel fermentation station is modular. So if you wanted to make a whole section, all you have to do is repeat your build and then connect them in whatever angle that you want to connect them in. In this case, I did a 90 degree angle. I kind of made a L shape, I guess you could call it. The biggest thing was I just connected my roof here in the back with a angle piece with a thatch roof, 26 degree corner right up there at the top. That was pretty much the only thing different that I did with this. Otherwise, I just built these side by side completely and connected them that way. And then I also connected a little shelf in here. I made just a corner shelf so that these two would share the shelf. Now, if you're building this on the inside, all you would have to do is remove the roof, obviously the, the roofing pieces and just build this straight up in your building. It just make sure that you have the height needed for it because these fermentators, they need a little bit of space above them. You can't build directly on top of the fermentator. So it has to have a little bit of head space, but it does need to be covered. It cannot just be sitting outside on its own as you probably already found out. And like I said, it gives you plenty of space here. You put two chests per per station 
In this case, we've got eight chests because we have two stations and six barrels. I also put a pot out here so that I could make all of my meads as needed. So there we go. Now, I'm going to show you a bigger eight barrel setup to build for your base. Okay, just like any other build that we do, you want to flatten out the space that you're going to need to build your building in. Also, make sure that you have the appropriate benches that you need in order to do your build. Let's take a look at the materials that we're going to need first. Once again, this is a basic build. It does not need anything special aside from bronze in order to make your fermentators, but... Okay, so we are going to start off with our wood. It doesn't matter where you start necessarily as far as which angle that you're looking at, but you, you need to start somewhere in the middle of where you're going to build. We're going to start off with a wood half wall, and then we're going to take a, a one by one wall, and we're going to rotate it one, give it one mouse click rotation, and we're going to add that there, and then go back to the half wall, and then back to the one by one, and we're going to do this all the way around until we make a complete circle. And there we have a circle. Next, we're gonna switch over to our two meter vertical wood pole. And we're gonna make this perpendicular with the long half wall that we have. We'll make it to where we don't want it to be at an angle to that half wall. We wanna make it perpendicular to it. And then we're gonna put both of those down on either side of it, rotate it twice and add it to the next long half wall. Rotate twice again and take that all the way around on all of these half walls. So once that's done, now we're gonna switch over to our two by two wood flooring. And in any of the longer half wall sections, you're gonna drop a piece of wood flooring. You're gonna then switch to the one meter vertical pole and we're gonna put one on each corner. Come back to the wood flooring. We're gonna rotate this to match up to the next piece. Go back to the one meter pole. We're gonna put one on this corner, one on this corner. And we're gonna do that going all the way around in all eight spots. Now this last one here that you're gonna do might be a little tricky. You wanna get it on the other sides of your initial of this post where it kind of looks like this. So and all these little triangle pieces right here, we're gonna change over now to our one by one wood flooring. And we're gonna match this up to those short wall, that one by one half wall. And we're gonna just drop a piece in there around all of these little corners. So this is what it should look like when you're done. Next, we're going to add another wood pole and we're going to go on top of each of these. Make sure that they match up to the bottom piece. So if you've got them both, you want them to both be straight up and down and then rotate them accordingly going all the way around. And that's what that should look like when you're done. Now that that's done, we need to identify where our cross is going to be. This is going to be very important. We want, we need to have a cross that goes across in order to form the foundation of our roof. I suggest grabbing this wood cross, and it's also going to overhang the edges, which is very difficult in this game because everything wants to snap to a point. But when we want to overhang roof edges over our building, it's kind of a pain to get that done. There's a way. We come to our 26 degree wood cross. So I'm going to say, so I want to put one here and directly across from that, I'm going to put one on the opposite side so that these two are directly across from each other. And then at that 90 degrees, be one here. And I'm going to come directly across from that. And this one's going to go right here. So using these crosses, what that allows us to do is snap in the center of the cross. And then if we add a wood beam there, we should be able to take a 26 degree angled wood beam now, snap it to here, remove the cross, snap the new one in there. And now this gives us an overhang that we were previously not able to get. I'm gonna come over here to this other side, directly across from that. I take that two meter wood beam, rotate that 90 degrees from the cross, get my 26 degree, gonna put that there. We're gonna remove this cross, put that in place. We're gonna extend these just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side and that side over there.
as you should have them each intersecting each other kind of like that now for these corner pieces we're going to do the same similar thing but we need to get this cross piece done first because these corner pieces aren't going to extend into the center these are just going to exist out here hanging out on here on the edge so now we're going to go back to our cross piece we're going to make sure that that's even with the pole we will put one there one there one there so the best way that we, to go about doing this if it's not matching up to where if you add in your cross piece and this will happen from time to time depending on on how these circles are never perfect but if you add in your cross piece and you're going to see here when i go to snap this in place see how it wants to snap on too far side of the board there taking up like half of the board even though this one is completely correct this one does not want to snap in here so what i would suggest doing then is with these cross pieces you can put the board inside of it like this so what i would suggest is do that remove your cross piece you're going to find that your board is snapped in the correct place do the same on the other side here and put your cross down bring in your other piece snap that inside your cross and then remove your cross and you should now be able to put the board correctly where it needs to be just like that so if you're finding that it, it's just not snapping quite right there's several ways to get this in the correct place if it's not functioning exactly the way that it should be so we're gonna see where this place is this and we'll move on from there okay that puts it right where it should be and so therefore i can go ahead and remove this cross and drop that one right in place there and there we go when you're all said and done this is what you should be looking at and to get a look from the inside it should look like this these corner pieces are above where we're gonna put our chests we're gonna want to fill these out a little bit too so what i suggest doing is if you keep these one meter boards perpendicular to each other it creates a kind of a, a little teardrop look almost so you just go 90 degrees off of one board and then you go 90 degrees off the other one and it should connect the two boards like that And there we go. We should be looking at something like this now. Now, what I'm gonna suggest is that we start putting some of the roofing up because we're gonna have to get up on top of the roof to finish this off. So we're gonna take a 26 degree thatch roof and on your cross pieces where we started out at, you're gonna drop this right to where it matches up with that cross beam there. So this is not a cross piece. <laughs> so we're gonna match it right up to that board right there. Just snap in place right there and then come around here, rotate around. You now you should also be able to come into here in the in-between pieces and you should be able to put those in as well once again always snapping it to that two meter board and that's what it should be so now i would suggest building a ladder so that we can get up on top of the rest of this roof now i would suggest adding in the piece here we don't want it to extend you don't want to snap it too far up you want it to snap right in this space just so that we don't fall through and uh <laughs> and have issues like that. So next we're gonna take our two meter horizontal board and we wanna snap these boards onto the end of these roof pieces. These roof pieces kind of interact a little bit. We wanna snap these to the end of the roof pieces. We don't want it to be too far back. We don't want it to be too far over. We want it to be right, right about, I would say right about there where it's meeting all the pieces evenly. We're gonna put that one there. You'll be able to see that sweet spot. Like that's too far back. That's not the right spot. That's the right spot right there. We're gonna turn this. We're gonna put this one in that same spot, which looks like it might be there. And that one's going to go there. So to finish this off up on the top here, we need to close off this little upper piece. If you try to put in a thatch roof here, it doesn't want to quite snap into place exactly in a spot you want it to be in. So we're going to try to create a spot. You need to pick a side. <laughs> you need to pick a side. Either this and this, or we're doing this one and this one. Uh, it doesn't really matter which. You just need to pick one of them so that you can snap to it. For instance, I'm going to snap to this one and this one same thing over here gonna snap to those two right there now this top piece is not perfectly square i don't know why it works this way it works this way it does not work this way and this is the way that it needs to work because we need to have the length for this to function correctly i don't know why it doesn't want to do that but this is what we're looking at. So what I suggest doing is we're gonna free snap first. We're gonna free snap this down a little bit. So you see how it's down, you know, down a level. And then you hold down shift again, and you can actually put this to where it's gonna be even, if you want it to be, with across the two beams. And then we can remove this one. And there you go. And then what you'll be able to do is then take your thatch roof, snap it there. Okay, and then come over here with your two meter board and you should be able to snap it, snap it 
to the roof, not the beams. And that will help keep everything a little even and symmetrical. Now for these last pieces here, for these corner pieces, we need to fill in these corner pieces. We're gonna take a 26 degree thatch roof again. You can do this one of two ways. You can either bring it down to where it's almost, it's halfway on top of the first piece and half over the gap, or you can bring it up. It doesn't really matter which way that you do this, however you want to have it. But we're just gonna snap it to this board to fill in these little gaps here. It's not like we need to have that hole open for venting or anything. We just need it to be covered. And there we go. That's the roof. Take a look at it from the inside. This is what we're looking at on the inside of the roof. And you can see it should tell me I'm exposed. I'm sheltered. So our next part is going to be we need to put our fermenters in place first because how the chests sit in this build, uh, it, they kind of intersect the fermenters a bit. So we can't quite. We had to put the fermenters in first before we can put the chests in. But before we do that, we need to create the shelves to catch our potion for the fermenters. Let's select our one meter wood beam horizontal. And you're going to see it's going to snap to the top, to the bottom, to the top. We don't, we don't want it at the top. We don't want it at the bottom. We want it in between. Find out where your top snap is, bottom snap, wherever it is. Place one of these, free snap it by hitting shift and then click. And then we're going to put two of those floor pieces, one by ones, come back with the board and there's a shelf. Now, I wish I could tell you that there's an easy way to make sure this is level all the way around the build. Unfortunately, there is not. I've tried multiple ways to do this. It always ends up shifting over slightly, going all the way around and the further around you go, the further the shift is. So it's not in the center. It's not actually attached to these beams. It's the shelf isn't sitting in the center anymore. It bothers me. So there's no good way, unfortunately, to make sure that this is definitely even going all the way around. The only thing that you can do, the only way that I've been able to find so far, because this is you're not meant to build circles in this game, and yet we still do. The only way that you can do this is by free snapping every shelf. So if you're like me and you're very particular about where you want these shelves to be, I would suggest one of the things that you could do is if you let it snap to the very top, you hit shift, it should snap down into a spot. If you can figure out what that spot is every time, or if you're really good at eyeballing it and figuring out where you want your shelves to be, then eyeball it. So we're gonna put this shelf on each of these eight stations going all the way around. Okay, that is all of our shelves all the way around. You're going to select your fermenter. You're going to rotate it around to where the nozzle's sticking out. I would try to get it into the middle of this piece right here, like right on that line where is where the, your nozzle is going to end up coming out. And you're going to move this as far forward as you want. You don't want it to be super back, but you do want that nozzle to hang over so that when we drop it in place, that might be a little bit too far forward. So I would probably go right to the edge of the flooring. You want it to be far enough back that it's still covered and sheltered, but far enough forward that that nozzle hangs out over top of that shelf. So I think that looks like a good spot. And then you're gonna come around and do this to each of the stations. And that's all of our fermenters. Now we want to add in our chests. Uh, you may have noticed that I had cross beams in here previously. I just realized I need to remove those. So I took all those cross beams out. You may need a ladder for this as well. So if you need a ladder, definitely build it because we're going to need the height for setting up some of these chests. We're going to take our chest. We're going to rotate this. And we're going to slide this back in place like so. We're going to switch over to a wood flooring piece. That should snap right in place if we point it at the wall here, right there. And then we can add in the next chest on top of that, right like that. Now to finish this section off, we're gonna take a one meter board and we're gonna rotate that around to cross in front of the wood flooring piece. And then we're gonna take a one by one, make sure that the smooth side is out. We want that to match up with this corner. We're gonna snap that in there and then take a one meter board again, place that on top. And then if you want, see how there's kind of a little bit of a gap in here, like you can see kind of the inside there. So what I would suggest doing is taking the wood flooring and you should be able to snap that right to the bottom of this and that will eliminate being able to see inside if that's important for you if you don't need that if that doesn't bother you that's absolutely fine it's not a needed thing that has to be done so again we're going to grab our ladder put our ladder up then we're going to take our chest we're going to slide our chest back until it turned green not red take our flooring piece get that to snap to those in between the two two meter boards there come back to our chest again then our one meter horizontal board will snap in the front grab our one by one wood wall you should be able to do this off from the ladder as you see me doing here grab the one meter board there and then the little flooring piece on the inside and i like to make sure things are covered up and then we're going to do that all the way around 
If you find an instance where your chest is not fitting in place, like so, it won't fit until it's out here, you can either, if you want, set all your chests to be this far out, or what I would suggest is disassemble the one fermenter next to it and replace that fermenter. Sometimes resetting the fermenter will give you the space that you need, like so. And there we go. We should be completely out of wood at this point in time. Should have all of our chests going all the way around, all of our fermenters in place. Now the only thing left to do is load up our fermenters. And as long as everything's been placed in these exact spots, everything should function just right. Load up our fermenters. And as you can see, each of these fermenters are taking the mead potion, the mead base. So they are absolutely fine to operate. And there we go, we'll check back in on these after they've had time to ferment. Now that we've allowed some time to pass, we're gonna check in on our fermenters and they're all done. So here's weedy, there's healing potion. Stamina potion. Poison resistance. And frost resistance. And all these fermentators work perfectly. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this build. I hope you put it in your world. I hope you get good use out of this, either the full eight barrel or the modular three barrel setup. I hope it works for you. If you like this kind of build, give a like to the video, drop a comment for viewer engagement. It could even just be an emoji, to be honest with you. If you just liked it enough that you just don't really wanna say anything, but you wanna let me know that you like that give a like drop an emoji on the comments below or if you have suggestions something that didn't quite work something that didn't make sense please leave a comment below and let me know i'd love to have criticism and comments on my builds that way i can only make them better for the next time so if you like content like this please let me know below i do stream on twitch addresses over here that's every monday wednesday and friday in the evening we play a lot of different games on stream i do stuff like this for valheim to first person shooters to puzzle games. I, I play just about everything. Stop on by, say hello. Let me know that you came from a video. I'd love to see you there. If you like this video, these kind of videos, and you want to see something else, please let me know if there's a specific build that you have a question about or something that you want me to try. Leave a comment below or stop by when I'm streaming on Twitch and drop a line in chat. But again, thank you so much for stopping by. I do appreciate your time. I hope you made it to the end of this video. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy. And I'll see you next time. Fun. Fun times. That's what we're here for. We're here to have fun. Fun. F is for freaking cheaters. U is for UAV. N is for the napalm. And that's how I'll be. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? I don't know. I'm, I'm not good.